Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and the next uh, antenna analyzer in our series is going to be this Nano VNA, Nano N-A-N-O, uh, right, very small, and Vector Network Analyzer, and somewhat similar to the uh, Mini 60S, uh, maybe even more so, there's a lot of variety uh, of these on the market. You can get these from several uh, Amazon sellers, a whole bunch of different eBay sellers. They pretty much all come from China. There's, there's definitely some variety to these. And I just want to go over the, the version that I have. Uh, there's black ones with, with black uh, you know, casing on it. There's white ones like this one with the, uh, the gecko. Uh, and there's, there's, there's some variety. There's a, a very active group.io uh, forum out there. And they're uh, looking at these and testing these and developing new improved uh, software. There are some different uh, firmware you can get for these and also PC software and a lot of a lot of very current development. I wish we had more of that for the Mini 60S. I think it could use that. I think the hardware for that one's fine and it does a good job. But here are the Nano VNA and I just want to go over fairly quickly here what you're going to get out of the box. I've got a couple of extra things, but uh, just to show you what you get, uh, a plain brown box. You get the unit itself, which does, you can get them with or without batteries and that'll affect the price when we talk about that price being from, say, 30 35 bucks to $75. Uh, you know, Amazon, the quote-unquote free shipping, does it have a built-in battery or not? This one had the built-in battery, something, and the accessory kit. So uh, that's why there's a pretty good variety of prices, around 50 bucks, pretty typically. Um, uh, again, from eBay or Amazon, uh, maybe a little bit higher with Amazon uh, sellers and shipping and, and the, the kit. Uh, but it comes with a USB-C, USB-C charging cable, some SMA, it has SMA connectors, female SMA connectors, and it comes with these little protective caps. A lot of cables and various things will have those. Uh, and then it comes with a female-to-female uh, -female pass through And it comes with three little caps here, and these are called standards. These are testing standards. And uh, there's lots of debate on these, lots of debates on these cables and things. Probably not the greatest quality in the world. Vector network analyzers, folks, you can spend five figures on professional equipment. That's not what this is, right? This is hobby equipment. And for, let's call it $50, I think you're getting a lot here. Is it going to be a great calibration? Well, for what I'm going to use it for, for what I think a lot of us would use it for, testing some antennas, we don't need, you know, the greatest uh, accuracy in the world. So are these standards good enough? I think they probably are. Uh, high quality standards can cost you way more than the device itself. Those can cost multiple hundreds of dollars just to get the standards. So uh, I, I think these will probably do a good enough job. So you get three of these. Now the silver one here on the right-hand side, this is the 50 ohm load. And then you've got an open, no pin in the center, and you've got a short where the pin and it's all shorted together. And then you, will, uh, as you do a calibration, you, you can do a pass-through. And it comes with two uh, cables, two male-to-male -male, uh, SMA cables. Again, are all these components the greatest quality in the world? Probably not. You know, when you spend that kind of money, it's sort of like the, uh, the Mini 60S. You're not really paying for software. You're not really paying for these accessories. You're paying for the unit. And if you get a few things and if they're of okay quality, then that's really just kind of a bonus. So quick introduction to the unit. We're going to uh, show you a, a closer look at it and uh, show, turn it around and some things here in just a minute. So we'll pause the video right here and we'll bring you folks right back. All right, and we're back, folks. And so I just want to go over real quick the uh, the physical uh, features of this. We've seen the front here and the labeling on the front. And we've got the top. This model has green LEDs. There are models with blue LEDs. We see the USB-C connector, the on-off switch, the rocker switch. The rocker switch there, by the way, uh, you can go through the menu systems and things with it. But also you have your cursors here on the screen. We have two traces here. There's a four trace unit and a three trace unit. So we have uh, the two trace unit and you can see those, those uh, cursors. Uh, of course, it's a touch screen. You can move it around that way, but you can also move it around this way. And you can go through, see those settings and things. So we've got that. Again, kind of cool, it's USB-C. There's not a whole lot else. 
Uh, it's just an open, uh, sort of a little open cabinet unit. There's the battery. There's not much on the ends. We have the SMA connectors down here. And they're marked on the front. And then there are some markings on the back as well. So we'll just turn it around. Let you see it for a moment. And so you've got some indicators for that rocker switch. You can move things left or right, and it is a button. You can click it. And you can go through the menu systems or use your finger, or you can use a stylus. Uh, on, off, battery on, USB-C. Again, transmit and receive. In the terms, they use S11, S21. Some VNAs will have uh, four connections we can work with, S12 and S22. Again, these are $50 units, so you're only going to get so much. And then it gets some other uh, labeling and branding. That's about it for the, the cabinet on these, the casing on these. So we'll turn it back around so we can have something to look at. So that's pretty much it for the uh, the unit itself. Some beauty shots, some close-ups, if you will. We'll pause the video right there. We'll come right back and we'll hook up a cable. And we'll look at a couple of antennas. And again, I've got some HTs out here. And uh, we'll look at some of these antennas and um, see if uh, the Nagoyas that I have appear to be legitimate or not, or at least decent antennas or not. And so we'll bring you folks right back. All right, folks, we're back. Then. And I've hooked up one of the default cables. I do have a better cable over there I got for another project. Shorter, probably higher quality. But that's okay. We'll use the cables that came with the unit. Uh, whatever equipment, connectors, cables, uh, you would go into your unit uh, and kind of on the home page, you go to this calibration section right here. Calibrate with that equipment. Make sure you get the, the best results. But general antenna analyzing, we can probably uh, maybe slack off things just a little bit. I have calibrated this unit uh, before, but uh, you would want to do that. Uh, so I've got one of the rubber ducking antennas off the both hangs. We know these are kind of giveaways. Not even all that good as a, <laughs> as a dummy load uh, sometimes, but uh, they will get you on the air. And the, the handy talkies are low power, so a not, a not great SWR is probably not going to kill us. Uh, and I've got the unit set up here. So I've got it set up. Uh, I turned on just the, the yellow trace, and we're showing SWR. And I've got it from 430 to 460 uh, megahertz. Right, and so 440, you know, in that range. Uh, and we can see it's right in the middle right now, 445. And right at that point, we can kind of see on the graph, we have, you know, two point. 2.4 we're, we're over 2 to 1 SWR at, at just about the right range now we can go down just a little bit it's a little better and then of course it gets a little bit worse so we can see it's it's not a great antenna at 440 let's switch over pretty quickly to and check the uh, 2 meter so we can come in here go to the stimulus button the start of the range and you just can click on here and bring up this input. Uh, so let's check uh, 140. And the stop of the range, let's check, uh, what do we want to do, 150. So we're doing 140 to 150, and let's bring it over. And do the 140s. Not too bad. So at two meters, it's not a bad antenna. It, it's uh, it's not too much over one, one eight eight. I mean, it's below two at least, below two to one. So definitely a little better at two meters. Still not great, but a little bit better. So that's what we got on the rubber ducky. Let's go ahead and pause the video. Let me hook up uh, one of the Nagoyas that I bought, and let's see if it does any better. So give me just a moment, and we'll bring you right back. All right, folks, and we're back. And I've connected one of the Nagoya 771 antennas. And we've currently got the uh, Nano VNA set up for the uh, 440 range. In fact, we're sitting right on 440 right now in the test. See that in the corner? And you can see that I've set the range from 420 to 460. And it right at 440, 180, 190. Right, not great. But keep in mind, and this is true with the rubber ducky. Of course, we had it laying down as well. But keep in mind, these antennas, your handy talkie units, like you see in the background there, the system is designed to where the antenna is on the radio, the radio is in your hand, and it's up next to your face. So the human body is acting as a counterpoise in that scenario. So the performance will be better for any antenna to test it more properly in that scenario. If I t pick this one up, and so it's not touching things, and I get it vertically oriented, 
and I get it closer to my body, look how much better that SWR gets. All right, that's not bad. One teens, 120. And the rubber ducky would have been a little better as well. Now, we were testing laying down, so we'll go ahead and put it back. But keep that in mind, okay? The, the orientation and, and handing, handling the, the handy talkie is, is going to make a difference there. But at least we can get a little bit of a comparison here. So the Nano VNA, it can certainly run the test. We can switch over to, uh, back over to, say, 140, check two meters again. And... Uh, 150 check that one out we're sitting right on 150 let's bring it down a little bit you know, 144 5 so again we're showing 220 but if I pick this up so it's not touching things bring it closer to my body right it gets significantly better you know 174 so if we actually had it on the radio and all that stuff it'd be even better still I'm sure so keep that in mind. Your testing uh, counts. Now, consistency of testing is important as well if you're going to compare things like we just did. So that's a quick uh, introduction to the Nano VNA. Nice piece of gear. has a lot of capabilities. We're not showing off uh, a whole lot of it. Uh, there's a lot that this thing can do. Uh, and again, if there's interest, let us know in the comment section what we can do a, an advanced um, section on this. Maybe even also the uh, MFJ269CM that KY4BDP uh, has. Uh, that has a lot of features we didn't, you know, have time to go into for the introduction video. Maybe even a combination of both of these units and just some of their advanced features. Let us know in the comments if you'd like that kind of thing. So, uh, we again en encourage you to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, it really helps out our small club and that's why KY4BDP and I am doing this to help out our club, capture some of the knowledge that our Elmers have and, uh, and as we're learning, so we appreciate you watching the videos. Uh, this is Chris, KY4CKP73.